Uh, this piece is cathedral, and I love watching um, viewers come to this piece because there's embedded glass right on the surface of this, and everyone who knows the etiquette of a gallery won't won't touch it. But it's fun to come as as the the tour guide and be like, "You're allowed to touch it. I can, you kind of need to touch this." And in fact, this is. Uh, the glass shards from the uh, rose window in the cathedral of Haiti from the ruins. And the story behind that was the first year I went, uh, there were gates all around the ruins. So you could see the walls and see like this rose window. And in fact, you can just see um, shadows of what I painted the first year I was there. It was, I painted it more on like a 45 degree angle. This tree kind of echoes here in some doorways um, had been from the first iteration of this painting and then umbrellas uh, down below, and the umbrellas were symbolic of almost like flowers growing because um, the umbrellas were everywhere in Haiti at the time because under the rubble of that church were the, was the choir. The choir had been practicing when the, when the cathedral fell. And so at that point, before it had been cleaned out, it was still a tomb. Uh, it was still the, uh, a memorial for, for, the, for, for those who were inside. But the next year that I returned uh, with, with a colleague and the art department head of the school I was at, uh, the gates were down. And I remember just like my heart jumping and we were able to go through what I knew to be hallowed ground. It's like sacred ground. And in the corner, like we were able to do a new series of watercolor paintings that would, and thousands of photos that I would use, well, hundreds of photos that day that I would use for, for this painting. But in the midst of it, I was finding these shards from the glass windows kind of swept into the corners. And, and so I started finding, finding pieces. Some of them are big. You can even see the, the metallic um, grid that uh, is embedded inside the glass so that it holds up against wind when the, when the pieces get really large. So I was picking them up and the, the kids that were in the, in the area were watching us as the, the foreigners thought it was a game. So they started running around and like picking up pieces of glass and they'd hold it in their shirt and like come to me. And I ended up coming home with like 10 pounds of glass and I was just praying that, that I would be able to make it through customs and they wouldn't ask me about this strange glass that I had with me. But I remember standing there feeling like these shards were sacred. They were just sacred and they were almost, uh, someone later said of, of one of the shows when they saw that, they were like, it, it looks like the crystallized tears of the people. And I thought that was an apt metaphor. And I remember uh, through the translator just kind of pledging myself as an artist of saying, uh, thank you for these pieces of glass. Like it's, it's my desire, it's my hope to use them to create a tribute um, of what happened here. And really my prayers for healing and restoration for those who are in lament. And so this, this painting really is kind of a, a lament. It would be a psalm of lament. Down below, there was this ginormous bell. And I, I went to a conference and someone quoted Leonard Cohen when he says, uh, ring the bells that still can ring. There is no perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. And I just remember like this idea of lament and brokenness and yet beauty within that um, was so poignant. So I ended up putting the bell that had been up in the bell tower and compared to the figure that's here in the painting, the bell would have been three times human scale, but I scaled it down because I wanted it to kind of fit within here. And uh, this girl was actually hovering here in the doorway, looking out into the city of Port-au-Prince. And I remember thinking, uh, who is she? Does she hover here because a mother or a father or a sibling or aunt or uncle was lost or was she just a passerby but she became kind of emblematic for me or iconic of Haiti uh, personified Haiti this young innocent vulnerable Haiti looking out from this overshadowing ruin out onto her people so this uh, joined with the the next piece is really uh, the prayer over religion and faith within Haiti a faith that's actually way further vibrant than what we often experience here in the United States. And it's this prayer that the health of their faith community uh, would be an anchor point in, in the Haitian culture.